Michelle DiPiero has been sentenced to jail for eight years. Why would the owner of a billion dollar brand be sentenced to jail? What has he done? Through this video, we'll take you through the life of Michel DiPiero, who people consider a perhaps simple man caught in life's complexities. Subscribe to the channel and ring the notifications bell before we begin. Supreme New York and its streetwear threads are identified globally. However, it is difficult to tell nowadays which one of them is real and which is counterfeit. This same battle of recognition has been around the original founder, James Jebbia, since 2017, after the international business firm and its brand, Supreme Italia, started snatching trademarks across Europe and the rest of the world. Now, there are a number of brick-and-mortar stores around the world selling the fake product. Michel DiPiero, the head of the British holding company International Brand Firm Limited, with his son Marcello, possessed the supreme trademark in countries like San Marino, Italy, Indonesia, Singapore, and Spain. While it is difficult to know what their real intentions are, they recently took one step forward by operating counterfeit one-for-one -one Supreme stores in Europe and China to sell what they call legal fakes. Michel and Marcello's fake stores simply exploited trademark loopholes and took advantage of people who wouldn't recognize the fake stores from the real ones by selling exact replica products. Recently, in an interview, Michel DiPiero, who has been making riches under the radar, unnoticed claims he is making fashion accessible to young people by selling more affordable items. He also claims that his clothes are enjoying success because the fabric is lightweight, which makes it more wearable in warm climates. For decades, the 53-year-old had worked in the textile industry and he specifically studied the rise of streetwear. Nevertheless, he was unaware of the existence of Supreme. He mentioned that he filed for registration in Italy in good faith, and even didn't know the brand existed elsewhere. Before he appeared, the brand wasn't popular, and no stores sold it. Even before launching Supreme Italia, Di Piero operated a sportswear business which went bankrupt, and was eventually convicted of fraud in relation to that bankruptcy. In 2018, Samsung Electronics announced that it had secured a collaboration with Supreme. However, the excitement it sparked died a bit when it was revealed that it actually wasn't the New York-based brand. It turns out that the South Korean tech giant had made a deal with Supreme Italia Michel DiPiero's fashion company accused of selling legal fakes. Through his international brand firm Limited, the Italian businessman was able to grab seven trademark registrations with the word Supreme, as well as names like Supreme Spain and Supreme Kids. After an Italian court called his operations to a halt in 2017, Piero was forced to shut down Supreme Italia stores and currently forbidden to sell in Italy. However, his brand still operates in multiple stores in Europe and Asia, selling merchandise with red and white Supreme letters. The Supreme Italia brand operated largely based on jurisdictional variations in trademark law. It took advantage of the first to file trademark system in certain countries where the right organizations issue trademark registrations to the first party that files for application, not the first to use the trademark. While the international British firm began using the Supreme trademark decades later than when Mr. Jebbia first put its box logo on the door of his first outpost in Manhattan in 1994, it was able to obtain registrations because it filed a trademark application in San Marino, one of the world's smallest countries and then exploited that registration into other countries. Di Piero managed to successfully influence much of the narratives surrounding his business, stating them as perfectly legal. Back in 2019, T. 
TFL mentioned that nearly every mainstream media article devoted their time to the battle between both Supreme and Supreme Italia, ending all descriptions with a specific title, Legal Fakes. The term refers to a legal copy of a brand where legal in this sense indicates that the fake brand is a trademark registered in a country where the original mark has yet to be launched. In the United States, legal fakes have no foundation in their trademark law, as well as the United Kingdom. It is not mentioned in legal textbooks, lawsuits, or scholarships, except of course in reference to Supreme Italia and IBF. According to Bird & Bird Law Firm headquartered in London, the name Legal Fakes was adopted by media outlets to describe Supreme Italia and its products. Michel DiPiero and his son took advantage of the common copyright scale of website domain names and applied it away from the internet. By registering their products before the original brand that has been operating since 1994, Supreme Italia was able to significantly infuse the white and red Supreme logo into their streetwear. When the original founder of Supreme learned of the reality of Supreme Italia, he condemned the copycat brand. When James Jebbia launched Supreme in 1994, the infamous Redbox logo wasn't the first Supreme logo to exist. When the stores first opened, James Jebbia, the legal owner of the Supreme brand, sold a range of merchandise, including one line of t-shirts that featured a very simple Supreme logo that his friend had designed. After that shirt began to sell out, Jebbia lent his friend a book by New York conceptual artist Barbara Kruger to inspire a new logo, the current rebellious Red Box logo. After being sentenced, fake Supreme owner Michelle DiPiero called the lawsuit a very grave and unjustified assault that is centered around absurd, unfounded, and slanderous allegations of counterfeiting registered trademarks. In the early months of 2018, law enforcement seized 120,000 counterfeit items in a raid considered to be the most important multi-jurisdiction civil enforcement operation in recent years. Michel DiPiero and his son Marcello didn't appear at the court when the sentence was given and their whereabouts are currently unknown. Regardless, Michel will serve eight years in jail and his son will serve Three. Did you like the video? Hit the like button and share the video with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more.